All right, everybody. So it looks like the Toronto Police Association and the Liberal Party of Canada, led by you know who, are going back and forth, kind of you know bashing each other a little bit. And I just have this statement here that the uh, the Toronto Police Association put out today, saying we'll continue to share the facts about gun violence, public safety, and the real impact on our communities. The job of the Toronto Police Association is to lobby for our eight thousand plus members, their families, and the communities we serve. No one else. We are sharing data about gun violence in Toronto. These facts represent the work of our members and the lives of the victims. Shame on anyone who suggests otherwise. Absolutely correct. And I showed this on a video I made yesterday where Jennifer O'Connell, which is she's probably one of the dumbest, if not the dumbest liberal MP, which is quite the accomplishment, saying that, you know, the conservatives are fighting for gun lobbyists. And that's why they don't want to ban guns and all this nonsense. And the Toronto police have come out and said, your policies aren't working. It's actually proven that in a lot of places where there are more registered um, civilians who have handguns, there's actually not that much crime because most people who do get guns, they get their licensing, they're responsible with it. So crime tends to go down. Now they've tried to ban guns. What's happening with crime? Now there's other factors, of course, right? With the, you know, the, the really you know, soft catch and release kind of policies that they have. That's also, you know, that's not helping the crime rate as well. That's definitely causing it to go up. Now, I also have a video for you guys here, just uh, kind of breaking this down. Uh, It's from the news forum. It's called Toronto Police Association criticizes Justin Trudeau on handgun ban. Because again, it's not working. So let's have a look at this video and then we'll talk about it after like usual. The Toronto Police Association took to X earlier this week to criticize Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's handgun ban, saying it has done nothing to reduce gun violence. Mr. Trudeau made a statement marking the two-year anniversary of his government's handgun ban when the association publicly responded, saying that criminals haven't gotten the message because shooting and gun-related homicides are on the rise. The association called the statement out of touch and offensive to victims of crime and police officers. We spoke to Clayton Campbell, president of the Toronto Police Association, to learn why they believe the handgun ban has not helped and what should be done to reduce violent gun crimes. I think his uh, post was really out of touch and really didn't speak to our members and to the victims of crime in the city of Toronto. As you know, shootings are up almost 45% this year. And some of the gun violence is really tearing apart the families in the city of Toronto. I think it was toned down. I think there's a few things. Number one is not keeping repeat violent offenders in custody. We see time and time again uh, offenders that are out there using firearms in the streets of of Toronto, firing guns in the streets, and they continually are on bail. And we need to make sure those repeat violent offenders are kept in custody. Secondly, there's clearly a problem at the border. We have 85% of the guns that were seized by our members came from the U.S., So there clearly needs to be some changes at the border. I think it's just a misunderstanding from the public. As you know, there's not a lot of the high percentage of the public that are actually uh, firearm owners. But as a firearm owner, we know that criminals don't follow the law. You can put all the laws in place you want, but they're not going to follow the law. And the key to it is to punish those that are involved in violent offenses, that are involved using firearms, or that are involved using anything with a illegal gun in the city of Toronto. The consequences have to be on the actual criminals and not on the law-abiding citizens that own firearms. Yeah, I mean, he made a lot of great points there, right? So, oops, sorry. So, I mean, and go figure, he had to use some common sense to try to get this message through Justin Trudeau's tiny little brain. Like, it's unbelievable that the liberals and their supporters, they just continue to just, they see common sense and they go, oh, of course people uh, who commit crime should be in jail, right? That's what common sense would say, but then they look to their their tiny little brains, or what it, if they even have brains, and what they think is, oh, let's give these people a second chance. Like, they're, they're shooting people on the streets. No, you don't get a second chance. Attempted murder or murder, you don't get a second chance. You do your time. That's common sense, which the liberals these days have none of. The, li- the, the left has completely lost their mind. They're so far left that they have... I don't even know if you want to call it empathy, but they have way too much of it, right? I'm not saying don't have any empathy. I'm just saying we got to put criminals in jail. We've also got to tighten up that border. 
again, they don't they don't do a very good job of checking what's in those shipping containers. And you know, there's a lot of illegal paraphernalia coming through the border. Clearly, what do you say? Eighty five percent of the the guns that we have on the street are coming from Toronto or coming from the United States. Okay, so you might want to tighten up the border, Justin. And also, like the guy said, you can make all kinds of laws that you want. If you're soft on the punishment, they're going to keep doing it. If you don't put people in jail for killing someone, why would they stop? Right? Seems like it's common sense. And I think that's why Pierre Polyev uses that slogan, because it's so effective, and most people have it, unless you're a Justin Trudeau supporter. Because Justin Trudeau, if you think that you're liberal and you vote for Justin Trudeau, you're not liberal. You're you're something that is much different and much, much farther to the left. And you need to wake up. And you need to wake up now because I can't believe you look at the polls, you still see Justin Trudeau, you know, hanging around 20, 25%. That makes no sense at all. Not to mention, you also have people swinging over the NDP. Their combined vote would be about 40, 42% right now. 42% of Canadians. That's disgusting. Like, how can you not see what's happening and then look at the conservatives and go, oh, they're the problem? It's like, hello, your leader, your leader has been ar- around in charge for nine, almost 10 years. And that idiot, Jugmeet Singh, also signed a coalition with him for two years. So he's on the hook for this too. But you keep voting for him. You complain about the problems and then you, you keep voting for the people who cause them. I've always heard that, you know, well, if you don't vote, you can't complain. No, no, no. If you vote and get your way, you can't complain. Because that doesn't make any goddamn sense, does it? I'm going to vote for Justin Trudeau. Oh, you're screwing us. All right. What should I do in the next election? Vote for Justin Trudeau. Then they do it again. And now some of these people are going to quadruple down on an insanely stupid uh, decision. So if you know any liberals out there, share this video, share whatever you know, conservative or just you know independent populist video, because we're all basically on the same team right now. It's independents, it's centrists, it's populists, and it's conservatives all against the liberals. And they somehow think they're going to win. Good luck, guys. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I always enjoy reading and engaging uh, with you guys. Also, to please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps grow the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with a new video.